here's a new formula. And again, if you got this question on an exam, they would give you the formula and explain what everything stands for. So a person borrows $15,000 to buy a car. So this, as far as realistic examples, this is probably the closest an example you could get to something that's going to happen to your, in your life in the next little bit. Might be buying a car. So you want to borrow $15,000 to buy that car. You can afford to pay $300 a month. So there goes that retirement party you planned before because now you can't retire because you're paying off your car. The loan will be repaid with equal monthly payments at 6% annual interest, compounded monthly. How many monthly payments will the person make? So in this one, we again want to solve for N. The present value, you owe $15,000. You are paying payments of 300, that's the R, square bracket, 1 minus 1 plus, and that I, it would say, is your interest rate per compounding period, since there's 12 compounding periods in a, 12 compounding periods in a year, that would be divided by 12, to the power of negative N, square bracket, all divided by I, which is 0 0.06 divided by 12. So again, we look at our equation. We want to try to get this part with the exponent by itself. So just like last time, we're dividing by something. The way to get rid of dividing by something is to multiply. So if we multiply both sides by 0 0.06 times 12, we get 75. Of course, on this side, these would cancel out. So 75 equals 300 square bracket 1 minus bracket 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the negative n square bracket. Dividing both sides by 300 will leave you with 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the minus n. And subtracting 1 on both sides. So subtracting 1 on both sides will give you negative 200. So these questions are just long because of the amount of algebra we had to do, amount of rearranging, just to get this part by itself. Now that we've done that, we can take the log or the natural log of both sides. And that negative n could come out in front. Right here. What I did is I multiplied both sides by a negative to get rid of. Yeah, so this negative sign here, I multiplied both sides by a negative 1 to make it positive, and then that'll make the 225 over 300 positive as well. But we are seeing that, and like last time we wrote the formula down wrong, can you see in the amount of number of little calculations that you have to do? And then to get n by itself, what are we going to have to divide by? Yeah. Yes. I can go up. So when I subtracted 1, 1 is the same as 
300 over 300 to get a common denominator when subtracting fractions. And so 75 minus 300 would give me negative 225. No problem. So then to get n by itself, what are all the things that we have to divide by? We have to divide by the negative and the log of 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. Plug this whole thing into our calculator. Oops. Use our fraction button. Log of 225 divided by 300 over negative log 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. 57.7, 57 57.68, 57.7. .7. So that N is the number of payments again. So the question was, the original question asked, how many monthly payments will that person make? So they're going to pay $300 a month 57 months, 57 months is approximately five years, which is about the average length of a car loan. You pay a car off over five years is quite a reasonable amount of time. Now I'd like to show you, going back to your calculator, how you could use your calculator to check this. We could take that n value, store it, plug it back into our formula to see if our formula was right. But last time we noticed we made a mistake with our formula. How does it work with your TVM solver? So we go to our finance, push enter, enter on TVM solver. We don't know, I'm going to just put a zero in there because we don't know how long it's going to be. The interest rate on this one was 6%, so we'll change this to 6%. Now, when you're getting a loan, this is why I said when you get money and I put money in quotation marks, put the value in as positive. Because what's happening is the bank is giving you $15,000 or the car company is giving you a car. So you are getting that money right away. So in our present value, you have just got $15,000. We put that in as a positive number. We are making payments of $300. Again, those payments are coming out of your pocket and going away to something else. So we'll put that in as a negative $300. What we want in the end is not to owe any money, so the future value should be zero. You should have paid it all back. Again, payments per year are 12 because we're paying monthly. Compound per year in this question was 12. And so we can go to the thing that we were trying to figure out and go alpha solve 57.68. Yes. It wasn't a mistake. We've got the same answer both times. But this is a lot faster, isn't it? Now, if the question on the exam doesn't say algebraically, or lately they've been saying use the formula below, and you don't use the formula, then you're going to be in trouble. But if it doesn't say that, then you could use this program. If you have a calculator and you wanted to plug this in, but again, this is nice to be able to check what the answer should be. The hard part about this is knowing where your positives and where your negatives are. And a ton of other interesting math can be done with this. Understanding interest rates, super important. Because you can find out from this, okay, if I'm paying $300 a month and you're charging me 6% interest, I'm buying a $15,000 car, how much are you actually paying for that car? That's something that sometimes people don't even figure out. If I go to that 300, I'll just do the, you can even do math on this screen. If I take 300 and I say I'm going to make 57.68 payments of 300, that vehicle is going to cost me $17,304. You are paying an extra $2,304 in interest. So when you decide to borrow money at a certain interest rate, you have to understand that you will be paying some interest. Most people understand that. But it's good to know how much interest that'll be.
So now we're going to play around a little bit. We're going to play around with this because $2,000, that's a lot of money. But that's not a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Because you're only buying something pretty big. Car is pretty big, right? Lunch is small. Coffee is really small. Car, big thing. Lots of money. What happens if you buy, after you buy your car, what's the next major big thing that you're going to buy in your life? A house. So if we go, I want to buy a house, okay? Let's say you're buying an average size house now in Winnipeg, sells for about $300,000. That might even be average small. Prices of houses have gone up a fair bit. So you're paying, so when you go to the bank and say, I want to buy a house, and they say, here's the money to buy it, or here's the house, they've really given you $300,000 up front. Let's say after all your down payments and what, that's how much you still owe the bank. What you're wondering is how much am I going to have to pay a month? Normally, with mortgages, you pay off a mortgage over 25 years. Almost your entire adult life, you're paying it off. So you will make 300 payments towards your house. Now, interest rates right now are quite low, okay? So let's say you were able to manage an interest rate of 4%. And right now, you can even get less than 4%. So we're going to look, we're going to play around with this. This is the nice thing about this program is you can get ideas of things without having to do a page of calculations, right? Because what happens in this page of calculations? You get tired and you don't want to do more calculations. What also happens in this page of calculations? You make a little mistake here and there, and your answers make no sense. And you don't really get the idea of what's going on. This program is nice for that. You can quickly put in things, boom, get an idea, understand a little bit about how interest rates work, play around with this program. So you've got 4% interest rate. We don't know what our payments are. I'm just going to put zero in there. Payments, you're going to make monthly payments. Luckily, mortgages, in Canada at least, by law, can only be compounded twice per year. So you don't pay interest on interest as much. But we saw earlier that the compounding periods doesn't make a huge difference. When we look quarterly versus infinitely, it wasn't a huge difference. But it is nice that it's only twice per year. So the question is, how much am I going to have to pay per month if I want to buy this $300,000 house. So you go up to your payments, and now you can solve for that. Alpha, solve. Just under $1,600. Seems like a reasonable mortgage payment. There goes that retirement fund again. right? You can see why, at first it makes sense, oh, I should put $10 away a month to retire. And then you run into, I bought a car, I bought a house, and all of a sudden that makes it more difficult to do that. So you've got $1,600 or 1578 If you want to figure out how much is this house going to cost you in the end, because you're going to pay 1578 and 6 cents 300 times. So I'm just going to take that and times it by 300 to find out how much is this house going to cost me. $473,000. That's a lot. That's a lot more than you started with, right? You paid the bank an extra $173,000. That's why there's banks. That's how they make their money, by lending money out and then charging interest rates. That's one of the main places where they get their income from. So you spent a lot of extra money for this house. The nice thing about a house is unlike a car, in 10 years, what's your car worth? Is it worth more than what you paid for it? No, it's less. We say that that is an asset that depreciates. It goes down. But a house goes up in value. It appreciates over time. So that house, even though it cost you $300,000 and you have paid four hundred, almost $500,000 for it, it might be worth $500,000 by that time 25 years later. Okay. If your parents have been in a house for a long time, ask them, or even not even that long, ask them how much they paid for it, 
and how much it's worth today and find out how much it's increased in value. Now, there's some real estate markets where values go down, and we'll talk about that as well. But right now, we're looking at paying $173,000. What's the biggest thing that's going to save you money when you borrow money is that interest rate. So let's say you work your butt off and you find a place that's willing to give you 3% instead of 4%. Instead of paying $1,578, you can just go to this now and go, Alpha Solve, your payments are down to $1,419. And then you say, well, now how much? So if I round it up, it'd be 74 cents times 300. How much are you paying for this house? Before it was 473. Wow. 425. $50,000 of interest you can save with one percentage point. That's a lot of money. Now, in 1980s, interest rates went crazy in Canada. It became very difficult to buy a house because the interest rates that banks were giving for mortgages skyrocketed. Skyrocketed up to as high as 18%. So now if we do the same example, see what would happen if it was 18%? How much, right? First time we had to pay what, 1570, second time was 1420. How much would you have to pay a month if the interest rates went up to 18%? Alpha solve. You'd have to pay 4,400 a month for that same house at 18%. Can we get How much is that $300,000 house going to cost you? You ready for this? Okay, yep, 1.3 million. And so at that time, a lot of people said, I can't afford to keep my house. I can't afford to keep paying for it. It makes more sense to rent than to buy a house because the interest rates are so high. What happens to house prices then? Since everybody's selling, house prices go down. Questions you can try. And we are going to try a couple of these for the next 15, 20 minutes are 7 and 12. So try 3 and 6 and 7 and 12 with these formulas. Try them with the formulas. Check them with your calculator.